Hi, I'm Brad. This video you're about to watch is one of the most exciting videos I have ever made in my life. It is the culmination of a ton of hard work and research on my part, and really actually comes all together from some previous videos I've done. In my previous Index 2 videos, I've been saying for a while I was going to explain how a standalone index or Index 2 would work. I have been putting it off. While I really did believe that all the research and speculation I have on my part was going to be correct, I was still believing that there was going to be one more patent to come out soon that would really push it over the edge. Ladies and gentlemen, we got it. The patent I was just holding in my hands explained a ton of things about not only just how standalone VR will work for the next index, but also how wireless VR will work for the index as well. It literally puts together a bunch of other pieces that other patents have explained into one big completed puzzle. So now I'm very excited to say this video exists because the puzzle has been completed, for the most part. So if you're excited in some high fidelity wireless PC VR, or maybe some even better standalone VR, then strap yourselves in. This is going to be a crazy one. So again, this video was a lot of hard work, and if you are not already subscribed or like this video, please do that for me now. It helps the channel a lot, and yeah. Anyway, let's get right back into it. The Valve Index is still my favorite headset, and while it is already two years old from this video, it is well-rounded in literally everything, and shows how Valve, when they're really working on hardware, they know what they're doing. However, as time went on, this thing is running out of features that really set it apart, especially with its current price tag. While in my opinion it's still a better value than this headset to the right of me, it's still just not a good value proposition in these days, especially with a new headset that I'm about to explain coming probably soon over the horizon. The Index cannot do any wireless PC VR, or any wireless VR. It does not have any built-in system on a chip, except for just a few basic things to make the display work. Not only that, it obviously just can't do wireless VR. Wireless PC VR. Valve had a plan to incorporate YGIG2, which I talked all about that in a video. I probably post a link somewhere. I don't know, maybe a card. But due to the slow certification of YGIG2, we still don't see it. Maybe this year. And while this headset lacked wireless, which is obviously one of the most important things to a majority of VR users, we've seen some very interesting sort of wireless systems come out from mostly the Quest 2 or standalone side. We have stuff such as virtual desktop and AirLink, and while they have pretty high latency situations for running over Wi-Fi, which was not really designed to transmit large amounts of data, let alone play video games wirelessly without anything, a lot of technology thanks to XR2 made it a lot less bleh, if you know what I mean. This patent I hold in my hand pretty much describes how Valve will implement their own version of AirLink. However, it's like AirLink on steroids. It talks about how Valve is actually working on an insanely specialized ASW, or a synchronous space warp that Oculus has for PC VR. But again, this system will be on steroids. I'm gonna get really nitty gritty in the details of how this system will work very soon. But first I want to explain a few of the smaller things about what I believe the Index 2 will or may have. First of all, in my previous videos I've always believed the Index 2 will have some sort of system on a chip, whether it be basic or a full standalone computer. This patent in my hand mostly talks about it being a full on standalone computer. Whether or not the Index 2 will come with full standalone built in or come as a wireless head strap attachment, which we've seen in a previous patent, it's to be seen. However, let's just say for the sake of this video to make things easier, the Index 2 has built-in standalone. Already there's a huge problem that a lot of people are very questionable about this. Why would Valve want to open a new marketplace built only under ARM, or rebuild a whole Steam store that is only compatible with VR? Well, my belief is they're not. My belief is they're completely retooling the current Steam store, and they're recreating something similar to big picture mode that is used for Steam VR and their old Steam machine console that failed. About a month ago, we saw some strings leaked about something called Steam Pal or Project Neptune. 
And Ars Technica came out with an article saying that Valve is working on a handheld that will be able to play basically anything on Steam in a Linux system. It will also be able to take advantage of something called Proton. If you do not know what Proton is, it's basically a huge Windows compatibility layer that basically Linux uses with Steam. Anyone that's done gaming with Linux over the past few years can tell you that Proton has been getting a ton of updates thanks to Steam's funding, and gaming on Linux is probably better than it's ever been. Coupled with the idea that Valve used to be working on a system called SteamOS, but has not received a, really any updates for the past couple years, my belief is that anything we see on this Steam handheld in terms of SteamOS or Proton, we will actually see carried over with the R&D side over to the Valve Index 2 standalone computer. The benefit of this for Valve is one, they get to stay on x86, and anything that is put on Steam can run under Proton under the Linux and Windows compatibility layer. So even if developers do not create their own games that work for standalone, there will be a chance that the game will work anyway with the Proton compatibility. Of course, x86 is very different to ARM, and ARM has some benefits in compared to x86, but it seems Valve is very just determined to use either AMD or Intel to make an x86 chip for any console hardware or even VR hardware in the near future. We know how Valve works on things, or really stops working on things. It makes no sense for Valve, a company of about 300 employees, to really create a whole store when they have the huge ecosystem of Steam. So instead of just rebuilding big picture mode from the ground up to include a brand new UI, build that into Steam VR 2.0, which is still being worked on, and incorporate that into its own OS with the console, Steam Pal, and the Valve Index 2 standalone, everything comes together very well. Any updates or really any software that needs to be updated by Valve can be pushed to all systems, whether it be the new big picture mode that's built into your Steam on your PC, or on your Steam Pal, the handheld that's reportedly being worked on, and then of course the VR headset which will be standalone. However, I must say that Valve is first and foremost a PC company. They have the Steam Store and they want people to play VR on their PC most and foremost. So while standalone will be possible with this patent that explains that it will have CPU, RAM, uh, GPU, an OS all built into the standalone compute unit, it does not mean that Valve is saying hey, we're going to build high fidelity games for the standalone unit in there. It's just an option. But what they really care a lot about is wireless PC VR. All forms of the next index will definitely be able to either have Wi-Fi, whether that be Wi-Fi 6 or maybe YGIG 2, who knows, built into it. And not only will the HMD be able to connect directly to your PC, it will actually be able to split the workload between your PC and the GPU and CPU built on the headset itself. In fact, this sort of teamwork between your PC and VR headset will be so good that the actual PC will be able to see how much latency is being sent for the data between your PC and headset, whether it be higher latency with Wi-Fi or even lower latency with wired. The headset itself will be able to compensate by predicting movements and much more. This might even benefit people that don't have a super souped up PC. Splitting the workload between the HMG GPU and the PC in the way that they're doing will actually allow lower tier PCs to actually run PC VR much better. Things such as predicting when the pixels should be illuminated within like 10 milliseconds in advance based on movement of your headset is insane. The PC and headset can even decide what objects are in the foreground that need more of this reproduction, maybe more importantly, than things in the background. Also, the headset will be able to overlay any tracking data from your controllers, index controllers, directly to the headset rather than letting it go into your PC and then being rendered through the whatever way you would do it like that. The headset will also have the compositor built into it. Currently, as it stands, the compositor is actually being run at all times on your PC and the compositor is being sent through the data throughput to your headset. So by allowing the compositor to run purely on the headset and allowing the just computer to send the, basically all the other data that it wants makes wireless PC VR much better latency wise. And with the prediction system, which will be very accurate and I'll explain why in a second, it will be able to bump up the frame rate even higher, especially for anything that might be dropped in the actual transmit process. Now I know some people might be asking, 
What is the difference between the reprojection and space warp systems that the Quest 2 uses and this system you're describing? It sounds pretty similar. It is actually pretty similar. There's a, actually a huge similarity to what Guy Godin implemented with his own space warp with the Quest 2 virtual desktop and what this is describing. However, that's using XR2's motion estimation system, which is limited in how much prediction that it can do. And while it's a great system, it cannot do nearly the amount of depth and prediction that this system does. This prediction system relies on a 1000 Hz tracking system, which is an insane amount of refresh rate for a tracking system. In fact, the Lighthouse system doesn't even track at that high refresh rate. But you know what does? Another patent I covered literally like a month ago. The Optical Flow Tracking System. The Optical Flow Tracking System was patented like a couple years ago, but was recently re-updated and I covered it this year. It allows up to 1000 Hz or even 2000 Hz in plurality with all the sensors. Optical Flow is actually running very similar to how computer mice run right now. You know, that little sensor that lights up when you pick up the mouse? Yeah, that's basically what the technology is using, but they're using it for markerless inside out tracking. So basically this prediction system cannot even exist without that actual tracking system that Valve has been working on. So basically the Quest 2 will basically not be able to implement anything as near or precise as this system. The IR cameras built in for the tracking system reaches nowhere near that amount of refresh rate and the high refresh rate mostly means the amount of data that they can capture to predict literally tons of milliseconds in advance of what the user may be doing based on the head movements. What's really cool about the system is if you're moving your head super fast, the HMD will actually tell the PC to render at more wider resolutions so that you don't actually have that weird black bar things when you're dropping frames and moving your head a lot faster. You might have seen that before. Maybe you're dropping a lot of frames even on PC VR and you're moving your head fast. You see that sort of black bar catching up with your display. Well, this system kind of counteracts that by actually rendering the layer mask to be even further than what your headset usually normally does, but only when you're moving your head super fast. Now I want to reiterate, this system does not only benefit wireless PC VR, it also benefits wired. While of course wired has a much lower latency, it still allows the actual GPU and compute unit inside the index 2 to kind of work together with the PC to split the task up. But for the wireless PC VR side, we'll see that if YGIG 2 is implemented, which again, I did a whole video about that, it will actually be even better than what YGIG 1 was on the HTC Vive. Having any sort of onboard computer doing reprojection for a system that's even as low latency as YGIG will be insane for just immersion, lack of compression, and all oh, so many other things. But even for Wi-Fi 6, this will be very good, and Valve has seemingly been even planning for this for a couple years. This patent came out in 2019. So while Wi-Fi 6 gets a lowest of 20 milliseconds of transmit data time, this prediction system will be able to counteract that a lot. So that's just wireless PC VR, and I've explained how I believe the standalone situation will work. There's a few other interesting moments that are mentioned in this patent that are also mentioned in pretty much all the other patents. That's why I'm saying, while a single patent usually does not really describe a product may release, when a bunch of patents are all working together in conjunction and they're this detailed, they almost literally prove that a product exists, at least as a prototype. The Index 2 will definitely have built-in eye tracking. Literally every patent I've seen on it literally describes in every situation that it will have eye tracking. Eye tracking gives a lot of VR and I've basically been a huge supporter of it for good amount of time now. It's logically the next big step to make VR more immersive and help with rendering work flows. 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 Foveated rendering may not be the most insane jump of making things work super well, but even the little games for standalone and high fidelity PC VR is enough to make it warranted to include. Not only that, social VR with eye tracking and face tracking is a must. Anyone that's done full body tracking could see that how amazing immersive that is, and eye and mouth tracking is the next step after full body tracking. But one thing in here that I haven't seen in really any of the other patents, which is very interesting, is it talks about something called including a vibrator to create haptic sensations. What are they talking about? They're actually talking about including a vibrator on your headset itself, in the face. Where have I heard this before? Well, Upload VR, like about a month back, reported that the PS5's VR2, or PSVR2, whatever you want to call it, 
will actually include both eye tracking and a motor for haptics on the face as well. So it seems Valve likes that idea as well. Or maybe Sony liked what Valve's doing. Maybe there's a spy. I don't know. I actually have something called the B Haptics Tactile, which is a face pad that goes on headsets to add haptics to your face. And things such as shooting yourself in the face or even being grabbed by a headcrab in Half-Life Alex becomes much more immersive when your face is actually vibrating. Just imagine that, being licked by a barnacle and just feeling it. Oh. However, I never liked the face pad's comfort, so I never used it. So building this feature as a, well, feature in the headset is awesome. And it might actually point to why in the actual Steam Pal or the Project Neptune files that we saw leaked, there were some strings that both talked about rumble and haptics. It's possible that rumble was talking about the controller's haptics and, well, the haptic stream was talking about the face haptics. If that is talking about the Valve Index standalone. So there may be some of you that are wondering, well, crap, I just bought my index recently. Am I left out in the garbage? Well, not completely. In the headstrap patent I mentioned earlier that also talked about ways to keep the basically a standalone computer away from the user's head so that the heat does not get too close. They even have a patent talking about a way to upgrade the current index to actually have a standalone computer. That being said, a lot of stuff you're seeing in this patent probably wouldn't carry over to this compute unit because the Valve Index 1 does not have the optical flow tracking system, so stuff like prediction will not be possible. So I'm curious about the people that actually will want to upgrade their Index 1 to include this sort of standalone compute unit. There doesn't seem much benefit in compared to actually upgrading to an Index 2. Which is why, even though I love the Index, I've been telling people to wait if they don't really have one yet. I use it every day and I love the device, but it is two years old and I really do believe in a refresh coming pretty soon. An Index 2 with all these features I discussed, even though I'm discussing things probably pretty fast and a very crazy amount, this is going to be in some insane high fidelity wireless PC VR at the very least. And hey, maybe the standalone stuff will actually be better than I even think. Of course, Valve, even in this patent, say that while standalone will be a feature, they literally say it in wording for this patent, it's mostly for basic graphic games and yeah. So for me, I'm really excited to have this. It sounds like it's going to make higher fidelity VR even more possible with just the pairing of the GPU and CPUs and the actual HMD with my insanely overpowered computer. It seems like the perfect PC VR enthusiast headset in every way. And literally everything, whether it comes to patents, leaks about the Project Neptune or Steam Pal OS, or even just small things such as SteamVR 2.0 being known to be in the works for a while. All three of these things in conjunction really prove that something big is happening at Valve. There's a lot of research and development happening to really refresh everything and make everything much better. So when you're watching my other videos, whether it be reviews for other headsets like this one right here, keep in mind that I do believe that some headsets coming out right now are going to be very passe whenever Valve gets their production into gear. When Valve does something, they take it to the extreme, and they do many things right. The Valve Index is literally one of the most used headsets on Steam, behind the Oculus Quest and Quest 2. For years, people have been saying a $1,000 headset would literally not be competitive at all. No one would buy it. But to this day, it still stacks up, and a lot of people are buying it and using it, even two years later, because it's just the best all-around experience you can get. So for me, yeah, I'm beyond excited. <laughs> and I think you should be too. While I don't think this headset will be competitive really to the Quest 2 in terms of price or anything, I think it's okay for some companies to focus on basic consumer and companies like Valve to really pull out all the stops to make the most interesting enthusiast VR headset. And as time goes on, even more competitors will stand up to Facebook. I think Sony's PSVR 2 will be the biggest competition to Facebook, in my opinion, so I'm not too worried. That being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I did not overwhelm you. It was a lot of work, and it's really hard to get everything down to words, and I don't use scripts, because scripts suck. I hope you have a good day, and, um, bye! <laughs>